The film opens with Phil, Bradley Cooper, on the telephone in the desert. He is calling the fiancé of his closest companion Doug, Justin Bartha, and tells her that they screwed up. We lost Doug. The life partner, Tracy Earn, Sasha Barcy, blows a gasket since she and Doug should get hitched in five hours. That won't occur. Two days sooner, Doug and his prospective brother by marriage Alan, Zach Galifianakis, are taking a stab at tuxedos. Alan says it's all right on the off chance that Doug doesn't carry him to the unhitched male party this evening. Alan is seriously socially uncouth however Doug clarifies that he believes Alan should be there with him. Doug goes to converse with his future father by marriage, Sid Earn, Jeffrey Tambor, and is allowed to take his Mercedes to Vegas for the unhitched male party since Sid recollects what being a young fellow was like. Doug says thanks to him and commitments that he will be the main one to drive the vehicle that day. Doug and Alan then, at that point, pass on to get the others. Doug's dearest companion Phil is a secondary teacher helping one to remember his classes to pay 90 bucks for a field excursion to an observatory, which they all immediately pay. Phil then eliminates the $3,500 from their envelopes and places them into an envelope checked Vegas. He gets his sack, disregards an understudy and hops into the Mercedes. The gathering then goes to triumph when it's all said and done their last part. Stu, Ed Rudders, a dental specialist, is at home contending with his better half, Melissa, Rachel Harris, about the lone wolf party. Stu tells her that they are going to Napa Valley for a wine sampling. Melissa is persuaded, nonetheless, that Phil will figure out how to find a strip club. The folks show up and Stu leaves with them. The gathering drives to Las Vegas and look into Caesar's royal residence. They attempt to choose how to pay and Phil volunteers Stu's MasterCard as the primary installment technique. Stu straight rejects, telling Phil that Melissa would see the charges and understand that they went to Vegas. Doug lets Stu know that they'll figure out the installment when they look at. They go higher up to prepare for their first evening out on the town. Stu lets Doug and Phil know that he will propose to Melissa and utilize his grandma's holocaust ring as a wedding band. While Doug salutes Stu, Phil transparently brings up that Melissa is a controlling bitch. Stu and Phil get into a contention and Phil tells Stu that Melissa is obviously not a decent individual since she undermined Stu when she laid down with a barkeep on a voyage. By then, Alan comes in with a travel bag and inquires as to whether they're prepared to let the canines out. The four go to the rooftop and give an impromptu speech. Alan gets everybody a fix of Jägermeister and afterward peruses an off-kilter discourse to the gathering letting them know how them four resemble a bunch of wolves. Phil then, at that point, lets the others know that he's toasting them to a night they will always remember. Time elapses as we see the night horizon of Las Vegas change gradually into the following morning. A lady leaves the room conveying her stiletto heels. Stu comes to on the floor with blood on his shirt. Phil is resting on the floor and Alan awakens on the sofa. The room is a finished wreck. A seat is horrendously consumed, sculptures litter the room, and there are a lot of champagne bottles adjusted as bowling pins. Alan goes to the restroom and sees a live tiger. Phil awakens when Alan steps on him and thinks that Alan is envisioning things. He snickers at the way that there is a tiger in the restroom and lets Stu know that his head harms. Stu understands that he's feeling the loss of a tooth and Phil can't resist the urge to chuckle. He stops once they understand Doug is mysteriously absent. They likewise note that Doug's sleeping cushion is absent. During their hunt, they hear a child crying in the storeroom. They don't have the foggiest idea about whose child it is however choose to take it with them to breakfast. At breakfast, Alan makes the child imagine jerk off for the folks and affectionately names him Carlos. Phil, Stu and Alan understand that they can't recall that anything from the prior night. They check their pockets for signs to what happened the previous evening. Alan has Stu's tooth, Stu has a receipt for a $800 withdrawal at the Bellagio, and Phil has an emergency clinic arm band on his wrist. They choose to make the emergency clinic their most memorable stop. Outside the inn, the triplet trusts that the valet will bring around their vehicle. They notice a cleaning group eliminating a sleeping cushion pierced on Caesar's sculpture on an upper level of the inn. Phil noticed that they probably had a wild evening. The valet drives up, not in the Mercedes, but rather in a squad car and gives Phil the keys. They drive off and go to the emergency clinic to get a lead on where Doug is. The emergency room specialist lets them know that Phil was conceded with a gentle blackout and that Doug was with them when they visited. 
Phil payoffs him for additional data and the specialist lets him know that they had quite recently come from a wedding at a sanctuary a couple of blocks away. The specialist likewise lets Phil know that he had high hints of Rufillin, alluding to the data salt drug known as Rufis, in his framework. Phil goes ballistic at the chance of having been assaulted, however the specialist lets him know he wasn't. The threesome chooses to head there. At the point when they show up at the house of prayer, they are welcomed like family by the owner, Vortex. They can't recollect why, however before long figured out that Stu wedded a lady named Jade him, the prior night and that everybody was available for the wedding. Stu goes crazy a tad, Phil investigates an invalidation and Swirl gives them Jade's location. The triplet head to the vehicle and as they pull out, they are defied by a couple of Asian criminals requesting that the threesome return somebody they hijacked. The criminals take out weapons and undermine the triplet before unintentionally shooting Vortex in the shoulder. Phil drives the vehicle out of the part. They get to Jade's and find her on the telephone blowing a gasket since she was unable to find her child. She sees Stu and is glad to see him however he cracks when he figures out that she's a stripper who functions as an escort and he gave her his grandma's holocaust ring. The gathering is intruded on by the appearance of two cops who capture the triplet for taking their vehicle. At the police headquarters, Phil chooses to call Tracy and tells her that they are appreciating Vegas such a lot of they are remaining an additional day. He doesn't tell her that they lost Doug and is compelled to hang up when they are taken to the cross-examination room. The two officials are irate that the triplet took their vehicle and need to hold them over to be summoned the next Monday. Phil clears up the circumstance and afterward endeavors for extort them into an arrangement, for forgetting about their crew vehicle, which misfires. The officials consent to let the folks free yet stunt each of the three into being guinea's pigs for a gathering of children, showing the impacts of a taser. The folks concur and climb at the impacts of being stunned by both the police and several of the children, one of not entirely settled to seek retribution on Alan when Alan kicked him delicately in the crew room. After the showing, the triplet head over to recuperate the Mercedes that the police appropriated. At that point, drive back toward the lodging to check whether Doug returned. On the manner in which they hear a thumping in the storage compartment and think that Doug is in the storage compartment of the vehicle. They open it just to have a showy and exposed Asian man named Leslie Chow, Ken Jiang, leap out with a crowbar and assault them. After he runs off bare, Alan concedes that he spiked their Jägermeister with the roofies, thinking they were bliss pills. Stu goes crazy, yet Phil relaxes and the triplet gets back to the lodging. They are going to go into the lodging when they recall the tiger. They circumspectly make the way for track down Mike Tyson and his guardian in the room. Tyson is singing in the air this evening by Phil Collins, getting the folks to participate prior to taking Alan unconscious. It turns out the tiger had a place with Tyson and the explanation they had the option to find the lodging was on the grounds that they found Doug's coat and room key in the tiger can find. The triplet are panicked on the grounds that Tyson suggests that the tiger might have eaten Doug. Tyson allows them an hour to take the tiger back to his home. Alan places five roofies into a crude stake to take out the tiger, and after two hours they truck the tiger into the Mercedes. While heading to Tyson's manor, the tiger awakens and scratches Phil's neck. The triplet escapes the vehicle and pushes it the last mile of the way while the tiger bites up the inside of the vehicle. After showing up at the chateau, Tyson shows them a security tape of them taking the tiger and Alan peeing into Tyson's cave lake. Doug was with them and they put it into a squad car yet not before Phil shouted, Look, I'm assaulting Tyson's tiger and emulating engaging in sexual relations with the creature. Tyson asks where they got the cop vehicle, and gives them props when they let him know they took it. With no further leads, the gathering makes a beeline for the lodging. While heading to the inn, Chow and his men crash their vehicle into the Mercedes and drive it into a post. If you like this video, let us know in the comments, and don't forget to give it a like. See you in the next video.